Hi, my name is Marion Kelmer, and I'm a farmer from Western Illinois, and also the founder and the owner of, of Kelmer Cornheads. And today, here at the Commodity Classic in Orlando, Florida, it's a pleasure to be joined by Dr. Fred Bilo from the University of Illinois. And uh, I've known Dr. Bilo for many years. Been on the speaking circuit. We've been on a lot of meetings together um, around the country, and. One of the topics that I've heard him talk about that I always find very interesting, very educational, is the seven wonders of corn yield. So give us a little bit about your thoughts on the seven wonders and, and what are some of the limiting factors that, that, that are holding us back and how we move to the next level. Yeah, so our seven wonders of the corn yield world is that top seven list of those management factors that each year can have a positive impact on corn. Yield. And I guess the bad news is sometimes they can have a negative impact too. But we use the seven wonders as a concept to tell growers those factors that they have to pay attention to. And the things that we research is the interaction among those, those seven. factors. Yeah, okay. think about it. Seven things all interacting with each other. Wow. That's what makes production so challenging, but yeah. uh, also so interesting. Exactly. So the um, as, as I try to maybe chunk the yields at my farm. Um, what are some of the things that you're seeing that, that most farmers can do? I mean, is it uh, fertility, population? What are, what, are, what are you looking for? Yeah, obviously for fertility is imp important, but uh, I'll tell you the thing that's changed the most over the last 50 years, and that is planting density. You yeah. know, when you, when you look at how corn yields have increased over the last 50 years, nine, 1965 average yield in the U.S., 70 bushels. Planting less wow. than 20,000 plants per acre, per acre. probably a 36-inch row. Who knows? Right. Now the average yield in the U.S. 178 bushels per acre, and the That's average so planting population in the U.S. last year just under 32,000 plants per acre. And wow. guess what, Marion? It's going to go up. Yeah, there, there's just no doubt about it. I think, you know, as, as I did my own on-farm research and I got into the the mid 90s, you know, that was the thing I was looking at. I had the 30-inch rows. And we we try to jack the population up, and you know, and just how how many plants can you can you cram into a 30 inch row before they become their own worst enemy? Yeah, that that you know the the genetics change very rapidly, and I don't have to tell you what the yield potential is today in every seed, and you know you know that today's seeds tolerate higher densities way more than they used to. Right. But we've looked at that's uh, the question mm -hmm. is you know what what's the top end yield for a 30 inch row? And what our research shows is the top end yield is about 38,000 plants per acre. Yep. So the the U.S. is at 32,000 now, goes up about 400 plants per acre per year. I did wow. the math, and in 15 years, the U.S. will be at the top end for a 30-inch row. That means something is going to have to change. Yeah, and that's I think what I saw at my farm. They, they, the the, the plants were all competing for sunlight. And they're they're in the same area in the 30 inch row, and they were all competing for moisture on a dry year, and uh, they were all competing for nutrients, and so that's when I started looking at the concept of can we go to a narrow row spacing, and uh, so I you know went to the 15 inch rows, and um, so at, at 28,000 that's 15 inches by 15 inches, but it certainly allows us to, to, to go even a little bit higher yet now. Yeah, you were uh, you were ahead of your time. <laughs> I mean, the future of corn has to be narrow rows. And, yeah. and there's a couple of reasons it has to be narrow rows. Even at the same density of plants as you narrow the row, you, you're covering more of that land area with green material and you're intercepting more light. And you and I yeah. know light interception is the whole premise behind agriculture. Not right. only are you intercepting more light, but you have more spacing between those plants so yeah. you can manage a higher density of plants. Yeah. I mean, it has to be, in my mind, the future. And it's going to be the very near future because of the densities that we're planting today. Well, I, you know, as from a farmer's point of view, I, I've always heard corn is a grass. Is that, is that correct? <laughs> yeah. Uh, who would have thought? Yeah, it's in the grass family. <laughs> and uh, you know, you know, you don't plant your lawn in rows. Well, that just did. And I mean, our pastures aren't in rows. And and so I, I guess I've always felt that. You know, I grew up with dad that farming, and we were at forty-inch rows, and we used to hill drop, and we we thought that was the perfect way to farm. And so when you think about it. Um, uh, corn should be solid seeded. I, if I'm going to maximize yield, maximize weed control, maximize erosion control, which is another big one, um, I, I think it's all about uh, going to the, the narrow rows. So the, 
the uh, world record yield holders, you know, we, we go back to, of course, from Illinois with, with Francis Childs and, uh, you know, in that 370 bracket, and, and he was able to get down to 28 inch rows. And then about 10 years later, um, uh, we get uh, uh, the, the gentleman from Iowa, um, Francis Childs, that went to the 20 inch rows. And now, of course, Randy Dowdy in 15 inch rows and uh, at the 500 bushel level. And, and so, uh, is there any chance we're going to be able to go to 600 bushel corn if we maybe look at 12 inch rows? Because 12 by 12 is one foot by one foot which is 43,560 plants per acre. Yeah, well, you know, agriculture was originally designed for plants and rows, you know, largely so we could cultivate. Yeah. And now that we uh, have better weed control, we really don't need to, to cultivate no. as much. And uh, you know, all those high yields that you mentioned, all those people are narrowing the row spaces. They're trying to intercept more light. And, and so I, I think ultimately we can have a solid seeding. But I think in the meantime, we're going to have to go somewhere in between what right. we're growing now and what the future holds. And I think I think that uh, that change is somewhere between 20 and 15 inch rows. I mean, I, I, I don't think grow I don't think farmers are willing to give up rows quite yet. Right. But but I, I clearly see a huge benefit from narrowing those rows. Yeah, and I, I think the uh, the narrow rows, of course, we get more green. But uh, you're going to be on the main stage here uh, Saturday morning. Uh, talking with Allison on uh, residue being your friend or your foe and so it's great to grow 500 bushel corn but now we got a new problem we, 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 we made more corn but now I got more more residue yes yeah anything that raises yield raises raises residue I mean if you if, if you look at how residue has changed over time every year we produce about a thousand pounds more residue Wow. So uh, <laughs> every year, a thousand pounds more. Ten years, that's another ton of residue. Right. And as we increase yield, when we go to narrow rows, guess what? More residue. Also, yep. hi also higher yield. And so part of the management practices that are going to come with the higher yields, whether they're narrow rows, higher densities, better genetics, is going to be more residue that needs to be managed. Absolutely. Well, as always, it's a pleasure to have you here in our booth today. It's always a, a pleasure to listen to you talk at, at meetings around the country. I know you've been traveling all winter, and uh, I know there will be a big crowd here tomorrow to, to listen to you talk. So, um, as always, um, we encourage you to keep up the good work, and uh, we look forward to listening to you tomorrow morning. So, with that, we want to say thanks to all of you for uh, tuning in today, and uh, we hope you have an absolutely wonderful day.